This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Good morning and welcome to Rotary in Hawaii. People of action. Rotarians around the world uh, engage each other in, and share a common vision and then meet, plan, and take action. Today we're uh, going to have a little conversation on, on human trafficking and we're, we're really fortunate to have with us uh, Veronica Lamb from the uh, Susanna Wesley Community Center and uh, Mark Merriam from the uh, Rotary Club of Metropolitan Honolulu and uh, someone who's been uh, vital in Rotary's efforts in Hawaii uh, to educate and uh, combat human trafficking in the area of uh, commercial sexual exploitation of children. Uh, Veronica, would you uh, take a couple moments and talk about uh, yourself and the Susanna Wesley Community Center? Yeah, sure, thank you. Um, so I've been working on the issue of human trafficking for just a little over a decade now. And it uh, started off where I just really felt called to get involved and worked on a number of as aspects of it as far as raising awareness, uh, eventually started um, housing a program to be able to house survivors working primarily with adults and did that for a number of years and have worked with, uh, well interacted with because we did direct services out in the community and meeting survivors where they are, uh, was fortunate to, to meet and interact with literally hundreds of survivors and I've mentored over a hundred of them, uh, mostly women and children but occasionally men also. And uh, many of them I actually live with while we were doing a portion of time of actually starting the housing program. Uh, so that's my background, but I, I work with Susanna Wesley Center as a victim specialist now. And Susanna Wesley Center has um, been in the community actually for a very long time. We joke that it's one of the best kept secrets in Kalihi because it's been there for 125 years. Wow serving the community, and they picked up and started helping on the human trafficking issue years ago, but were, you know, quiet about it, as they always are, uh, sort of humble servants in the community. And um, they now have the TVAP program, and I'm a victim specialist with that program, and we assist both children and adults who are victims of trafficking. TVAP, what, mm -hmm. what, what is TVAP? Yeah, TVAP stands for Trafficking Victims Assistance Program. Oh, okay. And we created it uh, within the last couple of years to really formalize our services and um, uh, build a bigger team to be able to support human trafficking victims. And does that work directly with young people, mm -hmm. with older people, or a whole variety? What's the services? We um, support a whole variety um, of individuals who are victims of trafficking. So we're, we are state contracted by Child Welfare Services to provide the services for any um, children that are trafficked, and that could be sex trafficking or labor trafficking. And we support them, and that's statewide, so even the neighbor islands. Uh, we provide support and services. And so that includes like consultation, um, crisis calls, um, support for other providers. And we are also networked ourselves with other providers in the community, um, like Pacific Survivor Center, Olahau Clinic with Dr. George Rhodes, and things like that. So we provide this comprehensive case management and connecting survivors, um, whether it be children or whether it be adults, with the services that they need, trauma-informed care, that has the experience to really understand where they're coming from and help them move on and get into their healing journey. Okay, we'll come back in a couple minutes and talk about uh, uh, human trafficking and its status in Hawaii. But I'd like to ask Mark to introduce himself as well, share a little bit about your experience in Rotary, uh, where you come from and why uh, this is something that you are uh, connected to. Rotary is an amazing organization because we can get involved in uh, the community and and support amazing organizations and that are uh, working with children, adults, seniors, uh, making a difference in uh, the environment, in human services, in both local and globally, we're able to, um, to make a difference. We have Rotarians across the state mm -hmm. uh, with 52 different clubs and they each take on their own projects. And as a district, the District of Hawaii, we decided to, to tackle and begin to talk about human trafficking as we realize that that's a, a, a subject that's not talked about enough. Mm -hmm. And so we've been trying to bring that more out in the open and, and say it's an important topic to talk about because with education we can start making a difference. It is, and uh, 
Five years ago, I uh, uh, attended a Rotary Peace Conference in Ontario, California. Um, it was kind of more on a whim than anything else, and I had no idea really what all of the, the subject matter would be. Um, and I chose the one that I knew the least about, and that was human trafficking. Um, and I remember my calling, if you mm -hmm. will, uh, the thing that connected to me. Um, when I heard uh, Basel Baz speak, uh, uh, Basel Baz is with the Association for the Recovery of Children. Um, he's a former CIA agent. Um, he travels on his own, at his own expense and goes out and uh, brings children back to their families uh, uh, when they've been trafficked around the world. Um, and I came back to Hawaii really very curious and, and passionate, connected to what's the status of human trafficking in Hawaii. We don't see it mm -hmm. on the street much. It's not in your face uh, like, like you know, the homeless uh, issue is mm -hmm. where we see it everywhere. Veronica, would you, would you share with us a little bit about the dynamics uh, of human trafficking today? Uh, maybe how it happens, how children uh, mm -hmm. get involved in it, some of the s statistics that our uh, uh, viewers might be interested in. Yeah, absolutely. So um, human trafficking, I, I think it is something that it's hard to talk about and therefore it's easy for us to be in denial about in our community. And we may not either be seeing it or we don't recognize the signs. And so we don't think that we're seeing it. But what we've um, learned over the years by servicing our clients is that it is very much real here. And an another thing that I think surprised us and may surprise the, the viewers is that it doesn't only affect um, one area or one uh, social economic class of people. We've seen it be per pervasive across Hawaii, and it's not just on Oahu, it's on the neighbor islands, it's not just in the low income areas, it's in the high income areas also. It's not only a problem in the public schools, but we've seen it throughout many private schools also. And so it often looks different than what people are expecting it to look like. Yeah, that's one of the things that I've discovered is that I, I really didn't realize that it's local girls that are impacted. Mm -hmm. These are teenagers that are impacted by human trafficking, local kids. Yeah. Um, that, that was an awakening to me and got me thinking and wanted to be more involved with the subject um, yeah. because it's not being talked about. And we think about it might be international people coming, but it, it's local kids Transient. that are impacted. And the agencies that are doing work with these kids is, is phenomenal. Yeah, it definitely is a local issue, and we're really encouraged. I don't know if um, you saw in the paper, if the viewers saw last week, there was an article that came out, and um, I brought a preliminary report of it. Um, but it was a sex trafficking in Hawaii research. It's a part two. It's done in conjunction with um, the State Commission on the Status of Women and a researcher from Arizona State University. I'm familiar with that. And so they were talking with um, local uh, adults and families whose kids had been trafficked, or for the adults, that they were trafficked as adults or as children. And um, they interviewed 22 different women. But one of the things that they found, and I thought that this was really telling, was that um, it was almost 80% of them were part Native Hawaiian. Wow. Here it is. 77.3% um, of the participants were at least uh, a portion of Native Hawaiian. And so it's definitely something that's happening here. Another thing that was very clear is that even though they were adults as they were being interviewed or the parents of children were being interviewed, the adults identified that when they got into it, they were children. Mm. And our children are being targeted. And we hear that in the study that is now... Um, you know, this is a great study because it's peer reviewed and everything that we can we can really trust. But it's something that we've been hearing in our clients for years is that it's happening. They're getting recruited and it's not like that snatch and grab white van thing right. that's went viral on social media. That's yeah. kind of a myth when it comes to trafficking. It has been a um, a coercive, a manipulative relationship that is usually started with the children or with the vulnerable young adults. 
and then lures and makes promises and that kind of stuff in order to get them into their control. An interesting t statistic that I read uh, mm -hmm. a, a while back was, uh, and I think many times we have preconceived ideas of who traffickers are, mm -hmm. but I read a statistic that 42% of traffickers are women. Um, and that there is a natural bonding between and, and a, and a, um, uh, mm -hmm. a, a sense that we feel safe yeah. with a woman yeah. as opposed to a, a, a male. Um, is that true? Is, is, that, is that a statistic that you're familiar with or is that even plausible? Um, I, I haven't read that specific um, statistic, but I do think that it's plausible. And it's plausible in two ways. Like one, in the cycle of abuse that an individual is going through, it's often to search for a point where the victim wants to feel stronger and it's easy for them to then turn into a victimizer. And we see traffickers and pimps really play on this because they try and pick um, one victim that they're going to make more promises to and that they're going to treat better so that the other victims in the stable feel as if they are less. It creates a sense of competition between them. And then also they want to uh, put elements of the crime so they're not, they're not going to face the full consequences. They want to put elements of the crime on other victims. So they teach victims, even teenagers and kids, how to recruit others and make that their job. And if they don't recruit, they could face punishment, you know, such as beatings and things like that. And so we have seen cases, um, and, and it's actually been charged and it's moved forward, but we've seen cases where kids have been groomed into being recruiters. And so they're literally recruiting their high school peers or even going down to the middle school level. We had a case um, where the main trafficker had groomed um, the older teens to become recruiters and they were going down to the middle school level and recruiting kids and then threatening and doing elements of, of, the, um, of the force and the fraud, that kind of stuff um, with them um, to create fear inside of them and then it felt like that it was almost like a gang atmosphere. It becomes very scary for the kids and hard for them to imagine how they're going to get out of it, especially if this is within their school and this is who they're running into. They, they have trouble feeling like that there's a safe place that they can go to. How does that cycle of abuse eventually get stopped? How does it get cut? How does? Oh, the cycle of abuse, I mean, it's a challenging thing. And I think that all service providers, regardless of whether they're helping um, domestic violence or uh, other forms of crime, like how they help victims get back on their feet. Um, with adults, in some ways it's a little bit easier on the recovery because cognitively they have grown and they have matured more. And usually when they are asking for help, it's because they really want help. And they're, they're making a, form, a firm decision then of like trying to get out. They've probably already tried a number of times before. For children, there isn't that grace period of giving them time to think through it and um, see the abuse for themselves. If law enforcement or if social providers or even if other nonprofits or schools or teachers or faith communities, if they suspect that a kid is being trafficked, it is now law that they have to call that into child welfare. And so the kid is more likely to be forcibly removed from the situation. And it's hard because they may have heartstrings tied right. to that trafficker That's because of the ties. manipulation. Yeah, and it's hard for them. And it takes a lot of therapy, support, um, understanding, listening, encouraging to help them um, come around and see how they've been taken advantage of. That brings me to the question, um, how does community or parents, uh, mm. uh, brothers and sisters, family, how do we recognize the signs of someone who's just getting into that cycle or, or is being put in that, that un, un, uh, tenuous position uh, whereby they're, they're being approached uh, mm -hmm. so that something can be done to prevent that from happening. I'm not sure that, that any of us are, are, in the community anyway, mm -hmm. are really knowledgeable about how to recognize the signs. Yeah, that's a great question. And there's actually two parts of it. So there's one, there's very early prevention mm -hmm. in raising healthy children and raising healthy people. Um, one of the key, thing, key trends that I noticed when working with survivors 
is that there was often failed key relationships in their life. So the foundational relationships that should have been there for them somehow failed at some level. And that could be because of something really um, uh, awful happening like abuse, or it could be struggles within the family with addiction, or it could simply be because a child has a family member who's part of the armed forces and they got deployed overseas for eight months. And that has a relational cost to it and that can be hard for the children. So there's that side of it is that we need to stay connected and make sure we have good supports around our youth in general all across the board. When you've got vulnerable youth and traffickers are very clear that they're looking for vulnerabilities and they're looking for someone who has been previously abused, physically abused, ideally sexually abused because they feel like if those boundaries have already been broken down it's easier for the trafficker or for the pimp to manipulate them and put them into a selling situation. Um, another sign that you wanna look for is a grooming relationship. So if there is a relationship that seems kind of inappropriate, maybe there's an inappropriate age difference, um, another big red flag would be if they are suddenly receiving expensive gifts. Um, you know, so if children are now suddenly showing up with really expensive purses, bags, items um, of clothing, shoes, um, cell phone, you know, like the latest new iPhone or gadget or, you know, whatever is trendy at that time. And that child previously didn't have access to that. So like if it's a teacher or a community member, you know that this family hasn't really had a lot of um, expensive items previously. That's a red flag. Or if you're a parent, you know that you haven't bought this for your child. They don't make that much money if they have a side job, you know. Um, so you're curious as to how is this happening and it doesn't seem quite right for this new relationship to suddenly be giving these expensive gifts. That's a red flag that maybe there's grooming and manipulation going on. Super. Um, I, it's my understanding we need to take a break. Okay, we'll be right back. Okay. Thank you. Great. Yeah. Good job. Sure, you're on. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. I'm getting older. Do I need to worry about falling? Yes, you do. Each year, one in four people 65 and older will experience a fall, and many will be serious. The majority of falls happen at home, so remove things that could make you trip and install handrails to keep you steady. To learn more about the steps you can take to help prevent a fall, please talk to your doctor. You can also visit aarpfoundation.org or medicaremadeclear.com slash falls. This message was brought to you by United Healthcare and AARP Foundation. Aloha, my name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea is on Think Tech Hawaii every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join me where my guests talk about law topics and ideas and music and Hawaiiana all across the sea from Hawaii and back again. Aloha. And welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii, uh, Rotary in Hawaii, uh, People of Action. We're here with Susanna, uh, with uh, uh, Veronica Lamb of Susanna Wesley uh, Community Center and Mark Merriam, the Rotary Club of Metropolitan Hon Honolulu. And we're talking about human trafficking in the context of uh, the commercial sexual exploitation of children, um, the acronym uh, CSEC. Uh, mm -hmm. um, Mark, uh, welcome back, and uh, would you share a little bit about uh, uh, current projects or current uh, educational programs that we're using in Rotary uh, throughout the state to create awareness of the issue and uh, what we're doing to uh, um, prevent uh, children from being involved in uh, sure. trafficking? Yeah, with Rotary, one of the amazing things is you have a critical mass of people. So you get enough people working together on a single issue, and we can and do make a difference. Uh, with Governor Wynn's leadership this year, our focus has been on human trafficking. And so there's about 30 different clubs that formal presentations have been made to, to well over 1,000 Rotarians already discussing the issue, bringing awareness to it, talking about what we can do to make a difference. Uh, we're working with Ho'olanapua, which is one of the agencies serving 
uh, traffic girls, and they're working to build a residential facility on the North Shore. Uh, so we're, we're helping and supporting that and, and their efforts. We're, we're building a garden right now that as they be, continue their construction of the facility, we're building a garden that will be a peaceful serenity garden uh, for the girls as they're in that residential facility. Uh, we, we've also, through our educational programs, uh, on, on Tuesday, January 29th, there's a, a significant awareness day that's going to be in downtown Honolulu on Fort Street Mall, Fort Street and King. It is uh, National Human Trafficking Awareness Month. That's yes. why we're here, that's why isn't we're it? Here. <laughs> and so it's uh, anybody that works downtown is welcome to come and see. There'll be a number of agencies there that have uh, educational displays and to learn more about the, um, uh, the issue and to become better educated about how we can recognize signs in particular uh, to help these help these girls uh, break that cycle. Uh, so it'll be from 10 o'clock in the morning to 2 in the afternoon on uh, Tuesday, January 29th on 4th Street Mall. Great. Um, anything planned for the future? Any uh, thoughts on, on where we're going with this uh, uh, going forward? I think as people become more aware and better educated that they're going to start taking uh, issues in different directions and supporting in different ways, reaching out to additional agencies, Susanna Wesley and the others that are doing such, such good work in the community and partnering uh, with all our individual Rotary Clubs. They can partner with different agencies and, and continue our efforts that way. It's uh, been a learning curve for the, for the last year and a half as we kind of got into this. And now it's uh, gaining speed and traction and people are committed and knowledgeable and uh, the partnerships will continue in the community. Great. Um, Veronica, if um, if someone was to want to become more involved in uh, the the issue and the, the fight, um, what would you suggest in terms of uh, uh, outreach, in terms of things that can be done, mm -hmm. uh, schools? I mean, I, I was yeah. talking to Amanda Leonard, and one of the things mm -hmm. that, that shocked me was, and she deals with runaway children yeah. um, and that kind of stuff, one of the things that surprised me was she related that, that we have hundreds if not thousands of children uh, in the state that run away every year, and that uh, many of them are uh, um, solicited mm -hmm. uh, within five hours of running away. That, that uh, I, I was shocked by that. What, yeah, that's a um, lot on your plate right there. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's a lot that the average community member can do. Okay, and I great. got started as an average community member. And so I'm a big believer in that. Um, one of the things that they can do is on the awareness side of it. And, you know, at one point, I think that it was easy for some of us that are in the field. We feel like we're talking about trafficking every day. Everybody's got to know about it by now. But in talking about this report, the sex trafficking in Hawaii, the first part of that came out in the fall. And if you guys remember, it reported huge numbers of demand here. So online, it estimated compared to other cities and what they had seen that there was one in 11 um, men, there's one in 11 men searching for sex to purchase, you know, and they're searching for that through the online ads and things like that. So I think awareness is still huge because if we have that big of a, population that's still looking to purchase sex and isn't understanding how trafficking is tied into this and the number of children that are tied into this. Our families. Families, yes, and we need to be talking about this more. So uh, I think awareness is a huge thing. Uh, one of our partners, Pacific Survivor Center, they created a film for kids and it's called Tricked and it uses the voices of survivors that were trafficked as children here in Hawaii. So it's local places, it's local voices, you know, it's totally relatable. It really gets the kids' attention. And so if people want to help partner with Pacific Survivor Center, they've been going into schools, but to get into more schools, get into youth groups, get into any sort of clubs that has kids. And then they also have, it's a discussion that they have with the kids, but they have facts and they have discussion that they could have in a parents' meeting or in a concerned community members' meeting, right? And so they can be talking with teachers, with school administrators, uh, with people of the faith community, leaders, you know, Rotarians, and saying, hey, these are the signs. And it really walks everybody through. And recognizing the symptoms mm -hmm. to bring more awareness to that, whether uh, school counselors are trained in that, whether yes. police officers are trained in recognizing uh, emergency room professionals, you know, that, that kind of education and training we probably need to do a better job with. To, uh, 
help people recognize the signs of uh, human trafficking. Yeah. Veronica, Mark, uh, I, I think we could sit here and talk about this uh, uh, unfortunate subject, if you yeah. will, for for a, a long time. But uh, we're we're running out of time uh, with this this segment. Uh, um, I hope you'll come back and 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 talk to us again and uh, uh, further our discussion about human trafficking. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping that our our audience uh, will engage with us. Uh, uh, more, you can go to rotaryd5000.org um, and, and see about Rotary. Um, in May, we're going to have a, uh, a conference on peace uh, here in the district in, uh, with Hawaii Rotarians. It is open to non-Rotarians as well. And we will have Brian Rush of the Human Thread Foundation um, from the uh, Pacific Northwest uh, come and be our keynote speaker. Uh, you're certainly welcome to come and join us. Uh, once again, thank you very much uh, the, for you this morning. Um, and if you're interested in all that Rotary does, uh, please join us. Uh, we have 52 clubs throughout the state, um, and you can connect with those at any point in time. I'd like to take a moment just to say thank you to Think Tech Hawaii uh, for hosting uh, Rotary in Hawaii, People of Action. <laughs>